Hi everyone. Water always finds its level. It's the mother of all Florf mantras. But as always, flat earthers are under a number of misunderstandings. And in this video, we're going to have a look at them. This is Florf Pratt. Flat Earth points refuted a thousand times. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and hit the bell. The first misunderstanding Florfs have is that they think definitions of words decide the behavior of reality. When, of course, definitions are nothing but arbitrary declarations of what the speaker intends to convey with a certain word. Words don't have true meanings. The correct definition of any word is the one being used by the speaker. A statement such as water always finds its level can be true for one definition of level and not for another. It can also be the case that it can be a good approximation under the right circumstances indistinguishable from true, even by the definition by which it's not generally true. I mean, it's perfectly fine to say that the surface of the water in a glass, a bathtub, or even an Olympic-sized swimming pool is level as in horizontal and flat. But what you can't do is declare that since this is at least apparently true, the meaning of level forces reality to comply with this definition. When we look at the behavior of liquids at larger scales and clearly see that they follow the curvature of the Earth, that's why the horizon exists, the only way we can say that their surfaces are level is if we introduce a new definition of level, namely perpendicular to the direction of gravity, maintaining constant altitude. Water finds its level by the first definition locally in a small enough area, where flat and of constant altitude are roughly synonymous. In fact, at a single point, they are perfectly synonymous. But for the statement to hold true at larger scales, we need to use the second definition. Pointing to the first definition and screaming, see globe tarts, this is what level really means, won't affect reality one bit. Reality doesn't care what meaning anyone ascribes to a word. That's why those of us who aren't willfully stupid let reality determine how we should define words, instead of defining words and expecting reality to change accordingly. That is, we adjust our definitions to what we observe, because what we observe doesn't give a damn about anyone's definitions. Flurfs are like children who, when reality doesn't conform to what they've been taught, go, but mom says, expecting reality to comply. Children are often taught oversimplifications and half-truths because they tend not to be able to take in the complexities of a full, technically accurate explanation of a subject. Remember learning addition when you were like, what, five, six? Remember how the teacher started by introducing the definitions and axioms of set theory? No? But the addition operation relies on them. You can't learn addition without them. You can't even define addition or the numbers you're supposed to add without them. Except, of course you can. It just won't be a technically accurate definition that captures all the complexities and nuances of the one used by mathematicians. It's an oversimplification that's good enough for now. College professors are not lying to students when they give them new definitions. They are replacing oversimplified definitions with technical ones that work better. Okay, so we're done with the definition of level. Water always finds its level by the new technical definition. Or does it? Put a single drop of water on a horizontal surface. Notice how it turns into a very fine film that covers the entire surface? You know, finds its level? No? Good, me neither. Turns out, even by the second definition, water always finds its level isn't a general law. The general law is that fluids affected by forces strive toward hydrostatic equilibrium a state where the forces acting on the fluid are balanced by a pressure gradient force. What that means is that if a fluid isn't affected by any forces other than its own gravity, it will form a sphere with an internal pressure gradient that balances out its own gravity. This is why planets are round and it's why water forms little spheres in a zero-g environment. It's a little more complex for the drop, because there are other significant forces at work on it, including Earth's gravity, the contact force from the surface it's resting on, and surface tension. 
for liquids, we can say that they take on a shape that minimizes the potential energy in them. For a sufficiently large body of liquid at rest in an external gravitational field and with comparatively low gravity of its own, this happens to be when its surface is level. For smaller bodies of liquid with additional significant forces acting on them, it's not. Hell, in small amounts, water even sticks to surfaces. Hey, Flurfs, here's water sticking to a spinning ball! But yes, in larger amounts, gravity will overpower the electromagnetic attraction and the water will drop or flow down. This is where Flurfs go, gotcha, because apparently it follows from what I just said that rivers can't flow north. No, unfortunately, I'm serious. Denial, they call it, thinking themselves oh so clever because the Nile flows north, and apparently we globetards are in denial about that. No, Flurfs, we're not. It's not that we're in denial, it's that you are stupid. That a river flows north does not mean that it flows toward higher gravitational potential, which indeed would not happen spontaneously. That would violate the second law of thermodynamics. Once again, flurfs are pretending that gravity is supposed to pull things south, not down. South is only down on a map, and only because we have arbitrarily decided to use that standard. Down, as in the direction toward lower gravitational potential, means radially in, toward the center of the attracting body, the Earth in this case. The Nile, like all rivers, starts at an altitude higher, as in further away from the Earth's center than sea level, and it reaches the sea at the sea level. In other words, it flows downhill. The liquid flowing down the river, yes, in this case that means north, is literally in the process of leveling out. It's so cute when Flurfs try to argue that something violates the laws of physics. Well, it, it would be if it weren't so infuriatingly annoying. While on that note, here's another stupid thing they say. Level flight. As in, a plane maintaining constant altitude would be impossible on a round Earth unless the pilot continuously pitches down. Pilots don't do that, therefore apparently the Earth is flat. Of course, flurfs are wrong as usual. The Earth is a sphere and pilots still don't have to pitch down all the time to maintain constant altitude because of... GRAVITY! Gravity affects every part of the plane, so without pilot input, the plane will tend to maintain its orientation relative to the direction of gravity. Because of the aerodynamic properties of the plane, this contributes toward it maintaining constant altitude. There are two more effects contributing. Assuming constant thrust, just to overcome wind resistance, if a plane were to drift to a higher altitude, it would trade kinetic energy for potential energy, slowing down, resulting in a decrease in lift, meaning it comes back down. Also, at higher altitudes, air pressure is lower, so that would also decrease lift, although it would reduce wind resistance. Even with all three of these effects contributing, it's still not perfect though. But at the speeds planes are moving, the resulting effect of the Earth curving down beneath the plane is so gradual that the pilot doesn't really notice it. Simply not aiming the plane perfectly horizontally or variations in air pressure can be enough to cause vertical drift, so a pilot, or the plane's autopilot, makes routine corrections all the time anyway. Speaking of pilots, pilots are in a position to tell whether the horizon drops, and they're in a position to tell what navigation systems and maps work, because they make observations every day that check the shape of the Earth. How many FLIRF pilots are there? I've never heard of one, and neither have flurfs. They know this. They know the Earth isn't flat. They're wrong, they know they're wrong, and they want to be wrong. See ya.